This document that we're looking at tonight is this particular presentation is a culminating effort of quite a few years of discussion. I want to kind of go through some of that only because I wanted to remind everyone, I mean, if you remember right, and it started back in when we had started discussing Audra Dulce in and of itself as it related to a charter school or a magnet school or a variety of different options that we had originally had planned and tried to come up with. If you remember again that we couldn't afford to install a uh, magnet school, it obviously is very costly. There's quite a few things that uh, occur and uh, the funding just was not there. The financial model and that engine just didn't exist and it was going to be literally impossible to do it right. So we kind of abandoned that plan, uh, but obviously we did not give up hope and we started thinking about alternatives. Uh, last year, there was an extensive amount of conversation around uh, charters and, and uh, so we had, I don't know, no less than five public meetings, uh, multiple booster club meetings. Uh, I mean, we, we had extensive conversation around that particular topic um, and in addition to that, we talked about uh, what the high schools should look like, the secondary schools, et cetera, et cetera. So tonight, uh, there are several action items. There are several discussion items. And keep in mind that there are no action items that decide exactly, okay, we're going to do X, and we take that action item tonight. What I'm going to ask the board to do, and again, this is why I want to go through this agenda, first of all, is uh, part of our goals tonight is to take a look at and transform Agua Dulce Elementary School into, and we had talked about potentially a charter school. Well, what does that look like? We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, secondly, we want to accelerate secondary learning. Remember, that's a critical piece that we had mentioned on many occasions that we feel like obviously we want more rigor, we want more connection, more opportunities, uh, more partnerships, more viable learning opportunities for all demographics, all subgroups, et cetera. And we wanted to really expand those offerings. And, and obviously we needed to find, again, once again, that financial engine that would help drive this. In addition to that, we wanted to talk about supporting countywide expansion of high quality charters and partners in, in this whole process. Um, we're pretty isolated here, guys. I think you all know that. Um, you, you, Again, I want to refer back to it. I don't like to constantly go back to that, but I mean, when I worked in Pomona, you have an inordinate amount of resources. The university, Cal Poly Pomona, you have Western University, you have the hospitals, you have uh, uh, all kinds of facilities that were just teeming with resources and opportunities for the school district to really partner with and, and offer programs to kids. A huge challenge in this area is obviously that lack of resource and uh, partnerships. We're obviously proposing and we're going to be taking a look at some of our goals to go outside of this area, stay within the county, but also generate multiple partnerships that we can utilize their resources and share our resources and put it together in such a way that it's a win-win situation for all of us. And obviously, uh, uh, attract out of district enrollment. I wanted to put that on here because I know that that's going to be an issue. We, we clearly recognize that. Understand that over the last several years, we have declined in enrollment. I have a few slides, and we'll talk about that. But understand that uh, this is an issue I wanted to address. I want to make sure that we're very clear of what that means. I also want to make sure that we're very clear. Our priority, and I know the board, and, the, and what they've told me, and I want to make sure and reassure everyone in the community that it's our intention to, number one, our number one priority is going to be our kids and our geographic area. That's our priority. Meaning, if we create a charter school at Agua Dulce, if, and it's all approved and it all goes through as planned, every one of our kids will have first right of refusal to attend that school. There isn't going to be, well, sorry, it's a charter school and you now have to attend someplace else. You'll have first right of refusal. And again, as we go through this, the whole thematic point of tonight is options. We want parents to drive this. We want parents to kind of dictate what the options are and be able to make choices, intelligent, educated choices around a series of options and relationships and partnerships that we develop and then afford them to you as the parents. So, comes with that though, increased ADA, increased enrollment means increased revenue. It's a simple formula. So yes, uh, we are looking at expanding the enrollment opportunities at Agua Dulce Elementary after 
we take care of our community first. Uh, and what would that look like? It would be, again, as a charter law, and I'll have Caprice go through some of that charter law, but it basically, by law, we can't restrict access, we can't restrict demographics, we, there's no entrance requirements, it's a public school. So anybody that applies would be able to attend, unless, again, it's an excess of the capacity, and then it would go to a lot. Okay? Not for our kids. Not for our kids. There'd be some MOUs, and we'll talk about what that looks like. But in essence, uh, we would be able to dictate, if you will, uh, that our kids have first right of options. Okay? I wanted to clarify that and make sure that everyone knows that, um, and that obviously the intention, none of this would make sense if our kids weren't taken care of first. I, I just, I got to lay it out there. Yes, we're going to be looking at, you know, uh, drawing in and, and attracting more to the area, but the primary responsibility all of us have, and as the board and obviously the fiduciary responsibilities I have, is to make sure that our students are our are, are first priority. I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, mince words in any way, shape, or form. That's that's our uh, Dr. Wood, if I intellect. Just, yes, sir. if I could just interject here, just as a point of record, not. Sorry, sure. I don't Absolutely. mean to interrupt you right in the middle of the presentation, but one of the things about that statement, though, that I just think is we don't know, right? And that's part of this is the quality of our information. Is in my own view, the attendance in it was only five years ago. But the attendance in Agua Dulce was 320, yes. 330. Now the attendance is 140, 140. Yeah. <laughs> so it, I don't know that so. when we say out of you know, once we filled capacity out of district has an opportunity. The interesting question for me is, uh, how many kids are in the district and are going there, right? And so if, if, if they had an opportunity to go there, let's say they're already going to yeah. a charter school or an alternative private school, if they then opt to go there, it wouldn't surprise me if in fact there are 300 students that are in Aqua Dulce. You might be right. 160 of them just aren't going to our school. You might be right. So as, as, as we as parents, and I'm a parent in Aqua Dulce, think about who is it that's going to the school, my, my first instinct and my expectation would be it, if it is successful, then the first thing we're doing is just bringing folks home. That's my first, yeah, absolutely, thank I you. I just wanted to clarify. You're right. And, and once again, a priority is to, you know, provide an option, a viable option, to our community members that they feel that they can come back home. Absolutely. Um, and that would be, obviously, again, if you live in our attendance area, that's a priority. They get preference, okay? So, if you will, also, uh, we're going to be asking the board in terms of actionable items. <coughs> I want you to take a look at and approve the transformation of Agua Dulce. What does that mean? And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And I want you to hear direction Obviously, there isn't an action item on the agenda tonight, but what that action is, definitive direction to me that says, Brent, go forward, take a look at this, bring back to us viable financial models, viable alternatives in terms of which charter schools, if it's Einstein, great. We'll have them come back in January for your consideration, and we'll move forward with it as per your direction at the end of this conversation. Secondly, we're going to talk about, I want to hear a direction from the superintendent, uh, to the superintendent, if you will, as it reads here. Uh, to come back in January uh, after our conversation with Mr. DeVoe and myself as we tag team that item around our secondary acceleration model. And what do we hope to get out of that and what do we hope to now expand our offerings to the community and expand our offerings to our students and any student, uh, again, uh, that chooses to either move in our area or attend our schools. We do have quite a few transfer kids that come out of the area as well currently, um, whether it be from Keppel or uh, Lake Hughes, etc. So we do have some, uh, quite a few of those kids, and obviously they're included in this mix. Thirdly, we're going to be talking about the charter school policy. That includes the matrix, the MOU. And let me explain what those are just in a nutshell. Uh, in essence, what they are is uh, because of the fact we'll be looking at multiple new partnerships, I wanted to put together boilerplate language, if you will, that really, uh, and I'll have Janet describe what that language is and what she's done with that, but in essence, I can't afford to have legal evaluate multiple other partnerships. We have, and legal has addressed this particular issue. They've evaluated the matrix, they've evaluated the policy. It's directly connected to the policy. 
I won't go into detail, I'll let Janet do that, as well as the MOU in terms of boilerplate language that we're asking you to take a look at, approve in terms of saying this is basic foundational knowledge, it's board policy, and it's specific to law. And I'll have Caprice Young talk a little bit about the law and the connection to that. As we go down there, we also want to talk about what's the reestablished act as a viable site. We've talked about that in multiple, on multiple occasions. I want to begin to talk a little bit about that site and what some of the options are. But we're talking about 1516. We've got some time to think about. But as you know, uh, we have uh, been afforded the opportunity to lease that structure. I want to talk a little bit about more about expanding those opportunities in the future. This is, again, no actionable item other than to take a look at it, what we currently have and, and move forward. Even though it's under action, it's only direction, if you will. Consensus direction, bring back this, talk about that. Uh, secondly, uh, or lastly, uh, is number five and six. Five is we have two, uh, two charter schools, the Academy of Arts and Sciences and SCALE, that presented uh, their hearings last, last time. We have vetted those, and I'll let uh, um, uh, Ms. Simons talk a little bit about that as the charter school coordinator. She's uh, taken a look at the matrix, vetted each and every one of those. Steve Budraja has vetted the financials. Uh, and Caprice Young has helped and assisted with that process. So we have a good, clear indicator of what type of partnership we're, we're advocating that we approve tonight. And just yes. let me insert once again. Absolutely. These two charter schools that he just mentioned that we're looking to adopt have nothing to do with Auburn Hills. That's correct. Okay, we are doing multiple things here. We're adopting charters, we're accepting petitions. That is one strategy beyond Einstein and anything to do with Agua Dulce. And I know some parents have gotten confused with, you know, is scale coming to Agua Dulce? Is this what's going on? But we're doing 100 things at once. Those have absolutely nothing to do with populating active school. These, these plants, these schools will be in LA area, in LA County. They will not be in our geographical area. Uh, they're independent study programs by and large, even though they have a unique configuration as a charter school, they're afforded the opportunity to do that. Obviously, our kids could attend that school by law if they want to travel down to L.A., just as they can any charter school in any region at any time, with or without our permission. There's many in Palmdale, there's several in, in Santa Clarita. We'll talk a little bit about that, but Mr. DeSasso is absolutely right. These particular schools are not, we're not looking to take over or transform into Agua Dulce Elementary School. These are a side or uh, in addition to as part of our uh, uh, partnership pool that we're looking at. I do have a question for or Yes, sir. Comment. So I understand it's not necessarily actionable, and, but when we talk about actionable things, uh, it's a little, at least for me, the new person, a little bit surprising that I'm curious how much money we're thinking of dumping into acting to make it a school, to make it a viable site relative to some of the needs of our existing campuses. And, um, I, you know, I, I would just say I'll be a little suspicious up front of if you build it, somebody will rent it versus we only have so much money. We, I mean, this room is beautiful, but, you know, you go to high desert, we could use a little work. Well, we, in school. So part of that, uh, uh, Mr. Fox, is that we have a resource, and we've proven that there's a model that may work around trying to recoup some resources. However, there are some inherent concerns with that, as we know. But you notice, again, I'm not even considering anything until 15, 16. This is a lengthy, Good. ongoing Good. Conversation. Be a but conversation. I want to make sure it's on the tables. Uh, Mr. Reidenauer and several other board members have you know, wanted me to take a look at that and making sure that we uh, utilize that site. Okay, But I agree with you. There's some uh, definite potential fatal flaws unless we, we do it very carefully. The last thing we want to do tonight is we have an additional charter school that's coming with us. We're very excited about is Renaissance Arts, uh, phenomenal elementary school. And check me if I'm wrong, I apologize. Uh, I don't yeah, PK. see who PK is, there she is. Mm -hmm. uh, you were the number one charter, rated charter school in California last year, is that my, am I correct? We were up there. Okay, so very highly rated, very, very uh, phenomenal school. Uh, staff visited the school and uh, was very impressed by that. We'll be having a hearing with them tonight and again, uh, Believe it or not, I mean, we've, we're, we're getting uh, quite a few interests of uh, different charter schools, and it's great to have someone and some organization of that quality, as well as the other two we're looking at tonight. So 
with that, I'm going to continue. Uh, again, we talked about this. The many paths to learning is critical for us. It's not about one size fits all anymore. And I think each and every one of you and each and every parent out there would say, I want it my way. This is my way. This is the way I would envision education to be, and it's about my kid. And absolutely. And there's going to be multiple opportunities and pathways as we go down with that. And we're talking about, you know, we're leveraging the public Turner law to employ best practices and take a look at schools that, uh, and authorize, if you will, innovative charter schools to create many paths. We want many options, multiple partnerships, over the course of time, obviously. We're trying to be careful not to build outside of our capacity, uh, but also at the same time be aggressive enough to be able to move forward, because I know parents want it now. They don't want to wait, oh, and I got a five-year plan five years from now. They want that plan next year and the year after that at most. We've heard that with the high school on multiple occasions, and obviously we're starting to get some uh, traction there, but at the same time, folks want to see construction. Folks want to see programs, they want to see uh, things happen ASAP. It looks good on paper. I think one of the things that will help us do better is, and I'm not suggesting that, because I don't have a basis to say, something that will do better is principals and administration in classrooms, watching what's going on in classrooms, seeing what's being taught and what's not being taught, seeing that classes are starting on time and that people are doing what they need to do on time. And I'm busy at work too. I, I'm, I don't know how I would be able to do my that job at the same time as all the, the, the glitzy stuff. And you know, if you guys have thought about that and you can, you can do this too, so some of then, Hey, more power too. Well, there's got I to think be some the first planting. something's got to. So, get. yeah, something's got to get. That's so what we want all to I'm trying to do is, plan, you know, yeah. put a little bit of dose of uh, realism here, and, and, and at least express to you my my priorities, which isn't necessarily the board priorities, which is some of the things you said were very very practical, and you could see it pay off immediately, and, and that's why, you know, I looked over there and I started smiling rather than rubbing my head, you know, like. <laughs> What we did, what you did, with the uh, the camera people, very highly leveraged, probably very low amount of time put into it. Uh, you know what you did with the painting thing, which goes to leadership. However, I just want to make sure that we don't direct you to spend so much time on. You know, it's still only going to be a 450 kid high school. And I am not convinced that online learning is going to get you all this great stuff. And I, and I want to make sure you have everyone. time. I know, I know, and it's about choices. But I want to make sure you have time to be in the classrooms and not just on campus. I know you're there. <laughs> and I'm not suggesting you're not in the classroom. But, you know, in the classroom, if and able to make sure that what needs to be happening in there for the three R's is happening. And so that's my only concern. And it all looks great. Well, thank you, uh, guys. I appreciate thank that. You. So on page 13, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Kim Tredick has done a, a inordinate amount of work around additional uh, uh, philanthropic uh, activities and, and grants and, and a variety of different things. If you would, if you can go to goal three, if you would, Kim. Okay. Um, well, actually, Mr. Porter and Mr. Fox kind of transitioned us into goal three. Because you're, at, you're talking about, you know, what really matters is what's happening in the classrooms, and that's really kind of the big idea here. Um, we talk about this, and we, and we all are very aware of all of the challenges, uh, the decline enrollment. Um, but when I see a challenge, I see it as a need. And it's something that we can address. And one of the things that we need are resources. We have limited resources for multiple reasons, but primarily um, geographic reasons. We are very isolated be between two large communities. We do not have industry in our neighborhood. We don't have medical facilities in our neighborhoods. We don't have colleges. We have CSUN, we have junior colleges, but they're they're, um, you know, not a hop, skip, and a jump from metal art. Um, we need to be creative to find these resources. And we need to create our own opportunities. And that is what this is doing, supporting 
the expansion of high quality charters as partners in excellence is really stepping out and having courage to look at creating these partnerships and actually fulfilling our vision of many paths to learning. We have high expectations and we have high excellence. What we do not have right now are the resources to make sure that we are fulfilling the needs of all of our children. I have worked um, for years in the area of differentiation. It is my passion. Um, in fact, Sid from Ren Arts, uh, we realized that we knew each other from um, the California Association of Gifted Conference and the demonstration schools. But I've been around for a while with differentiation. I feel like every single child has the right to learn. And we need to do, we owe them that opportunity. And what we're doing right now is creating those opportunities. And we don't know what those are going to look like, but what we are going to see is yes, we are going to get our 150 back in Siaco Dulce at 300. We are going to allow out of district student enrollment. But what we're really going to do, and why I was excited to be a part of this district, is what we're going to do is we are offering differentiation. We are maintaining excellence and keeping those paths open for our students. Um, several years ago, in 2006, um, I became, fortunately, became associated with the Milken Family Foundation. And Lowell Milken has said, through extensive research study and all the work that he's done with all of his educational um, innovations, is that the single most important factor in determining student achievement is the teacher in the classroom. Just like you said, it's the programs that facilitate the, difference, the differences in their learning. And so what I see and what Dr. Woodard has presented here is that we have an opportunity with these partners in the charter schools. Uh, Janet and I went down to see a charter school last week. And just the, um, I feel like I am a better educator for being, having the opportunity to talk to them. We can collaborate with these charter schools. We can create affiliations and create these um, partnerships, collaborations to improve our resources because that is our number one um, obstacle. These people in charter schools are innovative. I want to be innovative. I want to help my teachers at Metal Arts be innovative. I would love to collaborate for professional development with these people and share best practices because that is what is going to help our children here in um, our schools. So um, another thing, we talk about innovations. We talk about changing practices, Common Core coming this way. Um, I had an opportunity to talk with Joan Buchanan of the, um, she's an assembly member who's the head of the Department of Education, because I'm the chairperson for the Milken Family Foundation, I'm sorry, for the California Milken Educator Network. And what she has been saying is that we are looking at charters as the new way, because they are innovative, they are producing results. We are seeing kids at charter schools with 100% graduation rates. We are seeing things that we want for our own children. I have two kids of my own who um, are in college now. If they had an opportunity, if I had a chance to give them something that we're offering, I would have been all over that. Because when you do something that's right for kids, and you give them these opportunities, we don't know what kind of exponential growth we're providing for them. And so I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't know how many people are going to be involved, but I do know that we can collaborate and create a professional learning community with our partnering charters. Um, and we can increase our capacity our human capital. And that's really why we're all here. 
And so I'm very excited and grateful to be on board. And, um, you know, the big idea here is we are looking at many paths for high excellence and high expectations. And, by the way, Mr. Layton, thank you for the TV. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. May I add another Mike Fox observation? <laughs> so, uh, not the, I looked thoroughly at the MOU and the, uh, and the matrix. It's all great. It is very, uh, I commend you for putting together a process by which we can systematically and efficiently evaluate the people who may come before us. That's great. Uh, also, I have, uh, when we do consider the two charter schools tonight, I'm not, I will, uh, I don't want to give my answer before, but I'm not opposed to that. However, I'm also hearing tonight, and there's a lot of public participation here, as if uh, charter schools, and I just, are the holy grail of everything. And I want to ensure that we are careful each and every time, and I'm going to read you something, if you don't mind, from Joe Lucy, CSBA's 2014 president, or president, brings an engineer's analytical experience to school governance. I'm an engineer, I'm very analytical. Anyway, and I'm going to quote her, just because I don't want people to leave with it, you know, we're, gonna, we're trying hard, but too optimistic, some kind of thing like we're going to solve world hunger with charter schools. She goes, you know, I've gone back and forth in my thinking on charter schools. I used to think that the charter school movement was okay, that a charter school is a matter of choice, and we're a country that believes in opportunities and options for people. But as time goes on, I'm beginning to believe that charter schools are not really about choice, they're about dismantling a public school system. We're using it to augment our school system, so I do recognize that. And on average, I don't think charter schools do any better or worse than public schools. Obviously, if you have a troubled public school, you have to fix it or do something. Many will say that charter schools are public schools, and my answer is no, they're not really. They don't have a governing board that's elected by their community and accountable to the whole community. They don't follow open meeting rules. And they don't follow conflict of interest rules. So all I'm trying to say here is, you know, especially the independent charters, we do some oversight. But when you meet me in the... Uh, you know, the post office, and you want some level of accountability, you're not going to get it with an independent charter school as readily. So I just want to be let folks know that, you know, we, we should use it to augment our system. I think that's what you're trying to present here, but it shouldn't be presented as charter schools are going to fix every problem that you've gotten. Oh, a small district, we all moved to a small town, Via charter schools, it's going to give your kids, you know, this world-class curriculum of everything they could possibly want. It's just, you know, it's just not going to happen. So, and uh, I would encourage us to go carefully with each one we approve. Okay. Well, let me fill in one other hole that, that, as I understand it, that, that parents are concerned about. We have a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know if it's as heavy as a confidence gap, but uh, we've been espousing to the community dependent charter, dependent charter, dependent charter. Uh, I learned very late in the game that this is going to be an independent charter. And going to Mike's issues that Mike was talking about is what type of control do we have? Because although parents want to have their charter school at, at Al Dulce, um, they also want to make sure that there's some semblance of control, that they're not going off on the deep end, and you know, how do we manage that? And uh, we were of the belief, and I still am, that we could certainly have inroads on that by having an independent charter and an MOU. And so I think there's some pensiveness on the part of the community about, okay, well, what does that mean now if it goes to independent, and are we uh, selling the school off? Are we, you know, what are we doing? And um, if it's going to be independent, the challenge is I see it so that I don't get caught at the post office with, you realize it just went off the deep end over there, what are you going to do about it? I, as a school board member, do not want to look at a fellow citizen in the face and say, 
got no power, or we're completely, completely impudent on this. It, you know, they're doing their own thing over there. And I, okay, I've heard a lot about moving the charter school over to Abu Dhabi School. We have five campuses and four schools. Why not give them the fifth campus? We can lease it, move the district over to Abu Dhabi in a bungalow. If it's good enough for our kids, it's good enough for it's good enough for the board. It's good enough for everybody. I have no problem driving over there. I live just right down the street from here, but I have no problem driving over there. I've been in the superintendent's office in the past. Everybody says you can't make change with the schools. Believe me, I'll be in your office in a moment if something's going on with my kid. And the, and the school does not want to listen. That happened to me at the junior high. And I walked right up the board, and they didn't want to listen. I sat in your district office until the superintendent at that time came, came over. I have no issue with that. Why don't we look at the fifth school, the little school right in front of, um, uh, of the park right there. According to Julie Trovetti, uh -oh. yeah, she, I spoke with her in the beginning. She says they will bring it up to code, they will bring everything up, as long as it's good. I have no issue with that. We can bring a charter school in, but let's not give up our schools. Let's give up something we're not using. Bring investment. You talked about profit and loss. Well, what about return on our investments? That investment's just sitting there. We need to use the investments wisely. Let's go ahead and bring the charter school in, but let's go ahead and bring them in right there and allow them to bring other kids in. Were you aware that that school is presently being used by a charter? No. That's what's happening. It's okay, being presently it's being used by a charter. charter. So we welcome your idea. That's what we're doing right now. And which charter is using this? Einstein. Einstein. Einstein's in right now. Great. Let's bring another charter. She says she works uh, out of homes. She says they work independently from home. They don't have to come in every now and then. Not every I just want you to know we're open to your suggestion, and that's what we did with that. Well, by all means, yeah, we can definitely bring another one in. Right? we got plenty of land. Let's go and expand it. Absolutely. Donna? I'm Donna Fasile. I'm a great aunt of two at Aqua Dulce School and a member of the Booster Club. Um, first off, just a comment on your draft verification. I know before we were told that if you wanted to go to the charter school, you could go. If by chance there's too many kids to go in there, we end up in lotteries and there's no guarantee that you will get in. And that's why I'm reading that out of your And that's, that's a petition we're talking about, MOU, and the MOU would then specify that our kids get priority. Okay. So that's the MOU governs how kids get into the school. Okay. Typically, that yes, in a petition, they have to write it that way. An MOU now governs a, a, in terms of our ability to say our kids get priority. Okay. Because it's at, and that's one of the questions we're trying to resolve, yeah. because it's a charter school and all the goals set. Okay. Despite what those order plate right. I know petitions it's say, yeah. the MOU is going to indicate, or it won't get my vote, okay. that every child in Aqua Dulce School this year, right now, will be in that school next year right. as okay. a charter school kid. Okay, fair Period. enough. That's what we're watching for. Now, <laughs> other people might have to go lottery <laughs> to get in, okay, from everywhere else, but our kids are going to be there, and hopefully our kids who go to school elsewhere okay. will be in there and as well. If they choose to go to Middle Earth, they can do that as well. But I don't want like any parent thinking right. that a child who goes there now is getting kicked out into the dirt and Right. No, has, to, I has to go find a school or come over to Metal Arc. And, and I, I also don't want Metal Arc parents thinking that this school is going to get impacted by a flood of Aqua Dulce students. The whole design and purpose is to transform the school from what it is today to a charter school right. with all of those kids plus in attendance. Okay. I have a more immediate need or concern. Um, my understanding at the Christmas break, we are losing the teacher's lounge and we're losing a set of bathrooms. Um, That's not true. Okay. Basically what we are doing, we're evaluating every facility in the district and determining for our budget study session, which is coming up in the spring, we want to tell the board and be able to give them an adequate facilities report that says we still have X amount of portables that we are leasing. Okay, so currently they're staying, they're not going anywhere, it's just simply a, a study that we're conducting to determine 
and be able to apprise the board of uh, the facilities. Okay. Nothing's going away until they vote on it or give me direction otherwise. Okay, because my understanding, okay, well, at, you're hearing it from the boss. At <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not happening. Okay, right before <laughs> that, we, we complained before that we wanted a library. Okay, so Dr. Wood, is that the understanding we have? You're up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So if, if a parent did not want to be a part of the, and if an adult parent did not want to be a part of the charter and wanted to go to our traditional... We have a regular, beautiful school right here. The converse works. If a metal arts student wants to go exactly. to the charter, they can too. Exactly. Um, I just wanted to agree with Donna. We did hear that. We did hear that from Ms. Maroney and other sources have been that you told us to go to the principal, and that's what we did. Okay, well, we've got to work on our communication. Right, here, here right. Here. and that's all we're asking is we're not really getting any form of communication, especially the rest of the parents. We're very involved, so that's how we hear these things, but the other parents do not. I mean, I'm sure some of the things you didn't even hear until today, and um, you're on the board. <laughs> Besides that, um, with all due respect, you're asking us to put trust in you, but you told us that we would be a dependent charter and that was the basis of the community agreeing on Einstein. Um, so it's a little hard to put respect, I mean, trust in you when things are changing so rapidly. You meant the dependent charter, not yes. independent. Well, yes, but, dependent well, let me just, fair point, by the way, to your point about hearing things, I heard that today. Right. Right. Me, okay. But what's important to watch play out over the next uh, couple weeks, months, whatever, is to actually spend the time to understand what that means. And I haven't done it yet, too. Because if you don't use that word anymore, then I get scared, because I've heard that word. Now, the truth of the matter is, we didn't know what that word meant. You didn't know what it, they could have said, we're going to have a, uh, a Scooby-Doo charter next year, right? And now it's not going to be a Scooby-Doo charter, it's going to be an XYZ charter. No, no, you said Scooby, we didn't know what it meant. So right, but that's they exactly used a word that, was brought up. That, that we didn't know what it meant, and it turns out we actually don't really want it. Right. It just was accidentally used. So Well, that, that's my point exactly. It wasn't accidentally used. We specifically asked you questions, and it was brought up. What does These it mean are, to you? What it means to me is I don't want to lose the things. Well, first of all... In other words, what's the difference in your mind between a dependent and independent so that you feel independence worse? Just well, so I understand I, your point. Some of the traditional values. We moved here for a reason. Let's face it, all of us moved here for so a reason. So in your mind, if, if, if I use the term independent, it does not have traditional values and dependent has traditional values. Right. Because we were why, sure why? that those values would continue there because we would be dependent. Well, and they so your your desire them. for dependent rests on the assumption that there's any difference whatsoever between dependent and independent with respect to traditional values. Which, it's well, a legal term, it turns out. Well, what I'm saying is that's what you told us. Mm, I, I didn't. Well, maybe not you personally, but Doctor, that's well, what I you guess, said. At the I meeting. guess what you're you saying, said, ma'am, is that's 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 if we control it, if we control as a part of Agudolce, you feel that the character and the values of Agudolce will be then transferred onto the dependent charter that we are controlling. And I guess what's coming out tonight that through the MOU and through exerting right, but, and having a person on their board, all those manners we can still exercise a certain amount of control over them. The, 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 it turns out that those are two different words that basically describe, from what I'm understanding, the different legal treatments around liability. In terms of, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, that's true. The, what's in the MOU determines the nature of the relationship. You could have, for instance, I could have a dependent charter where I put in it, there will be no traditional values. And I could have an independent charter that said, there will be traditional values. But if you got stuck on the word dependent, you'd like the one that was bad now. Well, and also... Does that make sense? It, ma it makes sense. It's a contractual issue. And I get that okay. it's a PR problem that we tend to do that. Okay. We tend to go, dependent charter. Oh, no, not dependent charter. And that's a problem. We can't do that. Well, let, me, let, me, let me narrow it down to a, to a gnat's hair because... I gave you my word, me personally gave yes. you my word that we would control anything where somebody tried to put something in place that wasn't consistent with the way that school had operated before. Right. Okay. And regardless of what we call it, 
my commitment to you still stands. Okay. And that's what I want you to walk away that's with. That's right. My personal commitment to you, and I, I'm not including the rest of the board, because that was a personal you conversation me between you and me. Say what? My personal commitment to you is that I'm not approving anything that is inconsistent with whatever I have said to you or any of the other parents at the school about what will go on there. That was the genesis for my conversations about what, the language in the MOU. So regardless of what we call it, Celeste, my commitment to you still stands that it will operate in the manner that the parents want it to operate. And also, um I do see you at Shell gas station, so I will hold you to that. <laughs> but also, in, in the thing, what I looked up is that it said by California law, if there's more than the number of applicants, it has to be lottery. It does not say that there's more than the number. Of okay, but, but, that's but, standard, but, but that's standard charter law. That's that the MOU will remedy that. No, what no, I'm Mark. Is, if hold it's on a, a second. California law, how is the MOU? Going hold to on a second. How many students are there now? Uh, around 40, yeah. It used to have 360. Mm -hmm. If you can find 362 people with school-age kids that are in Aqua Dulce and, and, and get it to 363, then we'll finally have the problem you're talking about. But, but that's we gotta, what you were saying. All these people will come back. In I think they work. will, but I think we've got I two things going on. Well, they, then you won't yeah. have the problem she's worried right, about, right? You'll true. have a different one. Uh, <laughs> but, but the point is, there are two things going on. Demographic, socioeconomic, we don't have that same number of kids, right? Yeah. And the second one is, the kids that ought to be there are there. I personally think the number is 220-something. So there's 100... 90 to 100 kids that are going somewhere else that could go there. If they all come back, you still won't be at the lottery moment. So, well, another question I had based on um, that gentleman's thing, you said that um, at the Acton School, Einstein is there already. Well, are they, aren't they only there temporarily? Aren't they going back to Santa Clarita? I mean, a, an issue is I've heard from several different parents. I, I just want to let them know that we're certainly open to those types of out-of-the-box out Okay. Considerations. Well, let's for answer this question. Yeah. Well, what was um, the concern? From the I've, I've heard from several different parents that we've heard negative things being said by the Einstein parents coming down. Like, I can't wait to get out of this hellhole. Um, this is a Mexican school, which I have nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's good. Cool. But are they talking these about Dulce or Acton? Yeah. Dulce. Where our parents who are taking our children there are hearing this from Einstein's parents coming there. Which it's it's a bit uncomfortable to hear these negative things being yeah, said about our area. Coming to Acton, you mean? <laughs> to Aguadulce. Half of the half of the kindergartens and the first graders are at Aguadulce, yeah. and then the higher graders are at Acton School. Because I actually been hearing the opposite. Yeah, right? the that's weird. I've heard the opposite. Liking the the, the quaintness. And, of and the who, you know what? But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> should we get into what you know what we hear the parents well, about each other say in the parking lot? <laughs> <No. laughs> You know, talking about that, right? Well, I mean, because if you're I'll looking for reasons race. to be upset, <laughs> okay. we, can, we can really get upset. But I'm just saying, you know, uh, how long do we have a time frame on how long, or is, when it's next year, Agua Dulce? Is it going to be just Agua Dulce? I mean, it's Einstein Agua Dulce campus, right? It's no longer really Agua Dulce. So technically, are you really closing Agua Dulce and it's Einstein so, Agua Dulce so, campus? I, I sense that you're, you've got a lot of these concerns that I'm. And we're at 12 minutes now. I think it's worth continuing to talk for a little bit. Thank you, Ed. I um, agree. But, look, Ed's kids went to Aquadulce. I live in Aquadulce. My kids are going to Aquadulce. Yeah. There is no grand conspiracy, you know, no, to close it. And, but you know, no. we're trying to get a better result. No, it's plummeting. Nobody's happy, right? The people, before the, before the Santa Clarita people showed up and said they didn't like the school, the parents of the place said they didn't like the school, and they didn't like each other, by the way, and they didn't like the teachers. So nobody likes each other over there. So what we're trying to do is do better. We're getting the, a group that is highly recognized for being very successful to come in and bring their program. Two great accolades by in general. I suspect that will have very good results. Will we be able to find reasons to complain? Sure. But in general, we are excited about that notion, and we're not giving away the campus. If we don't like them, we'll toss them out, we'll get somebody well, else. What I'm saying is, okay, I understand they're coming, and I'm fine with that. They, the people who are there seem very nice. 
I'm excited about the changes in education if it's for betterment of my child, of course. Um, I think the thing is the communication again. We just want to know more. I want to know where my kid is going to go next year. I don't want to hear rumors that it's not going to be Einstein after we were said it was going to be Einstein. Is your child an Agadolce Hayes child yes. that would be going there next year? Yes. Then your child's going to Agadolce school. So and I that's mean, called Einstein if they approve it. And, and I don't like to use the word closed. I, I think the word is we're transforming it well, from a closed. standard public school to a charter school. If you prefer, it makes you feel more comfortable to say that the, that the school is being closed and reopened as a, okay, but that's at the direction of the parents at Agua Dulce. We don't want to go to Agua Dulce school. We don't want to go there. We can't operate it at a half million. And of all the other commitments I've made, I've also committed that as a school board member, as long as, long as I sat here as a board member, I would never close that school yes. and make everybody come somewhere else. Yes, you did. It's been operating a half million dollar deficit. I'd like to say I've kept my commitment to keep that school open, even though it has been economically unfeasible and a horrible business model to do so. I believe that kids who live in Agua Dulce should go to school in Agua Dulce. The parents said, we want, it, we want a charter school there. So now we're going to take it, whether you want to say transform or close or whatever, we're turning it into a charter school. But that was at the request of the parents, the, okay. the, the consensus of the parents. What I'm saying is, I understand all that. Okay. What I'm saying is, just let us know what's happening. We just want to know what's happening. We want to know what. I'm not sure. Don't, don't, don't fill lack know. of information up with with all sorts of possibilities. I mean, that's well, the hard. This is the meeting, right? How, how much more often can we meet? I mean, my gosh, we meet and we stay here all night, all the time. I mean. As fast as we can provide information, we are. Walk we can't away. keep up with the rumor. Walk away, Celeste, knowing that that charter school opens, Einstein opens in September, and your child will be going there, along with the other four, uh, 148 kids that currently attend the school. So it's going to be all grades? What's that? So you're saying it's going to be all grades? It's going to be all grades. Yeah. All grades that are currently um, there. Okay. All grades that are currently there are going to stay there. Okay. Well, I these are some it. of the things okay. we also want to know. Like, it who's going to pay for the programs? Are case. we going to still, I mean, as the booster club, are we still going to continue to pay for certain teachers? Are, is Einstein going to serve? So I mean, these we're, are the we're, things we're, we want to know so to here, here's plan what I think for the we future. Should do. We're, we're, we're um, way over time, just yeah. so you know, and there's other people that have comments. So yeah. we can assemble, and I'm, I'm happy to participate, Dr. Woodard. We can go back and have another uh, information session over there. That so would people be appreciated. Can, that would that be helpful? That so be why, don't, why don't we do okay. that? Thank and we you. should do it when we have when we have a little when we know even more. Okay. So I'd say we're not more than a couple weeks away from that because we'll get the full petition. Right. Okay. So that's may, I just, may I just conclude this by saying, in, in the interest of time, I'll uh, try to be very quick. That 2011, 2012, we lost 300 k there, and 467 last year. This year is actually going to be closer to 600 k that we're going to lose there. At a certain point, um, I I certainly know my my own child going there and living there, I did stick with the notion like Mark that I would never close that place. But there has got to come a point where we have to honor our fiduciary obligation to the entire district. Right, which so I'm not saying anything about. I, I think he answered the question sufficiently I, I just, with that uh, he would give us some information on the meeting. That's yeah, all and want. I just want you to know that, that we're hemorrhaging over there. At a certain point, we get into the we understand into the survival of our district. <laughs> yeah, into the survival of our district, and if we got into receivership at some point, the nightmare scenario will be more in Acton as opposed to Agua Dulce. The Agua Dulce kids will end up going to the Santa Clarita schools. The Acton kids are going to end up going to the ghetto. Then go to the Agua Dulce. So, where are you going here? So I'm just saying that's what that's what we're trying to avoid. Yeah, yeah.